This is the Reverend Philip K. here with you on the Dudas Journey podcast. Uh, got no video for the YouTube folks today. Uh, working solely on the audio. Um, now, the reason uh, I haven't posted an episode in quite some time, I was uh, uh, had some issues there. I had recorded two episodes, but when I went to edit them, the audio was, was terrible. Something had happened. So, uh, I also discovered the computer I was working on, um, unfortunately has uh, some issues uh the power supply is out so i've got to fix that which and it's a super system so it's like three hundred dollars i'm like (laughs) jesus oh man they don't make them cheap you want power buddy you gotta pay for it i'm also getting over a cold so you'll hear a bit of a raspy cough as i'm smoking here which helps so much with that oh but hey, I hope you're all doing well out there in the world. It is November 18th, and Thanksgiving is a week away, so I'm sure you're all getting your turkey and pie and cranberry sauce ready. I'm not doing turkey. I, I, the women in my family hate making the turkey. I've made probably one turkey, and it's an SOB to do. So we just said, fudge it, let's just do ham, and we'll make the ham fancy. You know, with, with, with like the pineapple slices and the cherries. And and, uh, uh, and to me, it's like, uh, one friend pointed out, it's like, why spend all this trouble doing a turkey? You could just do rotisserie chicken. I mean, they're going to smother the crap in gravy anyway, so what does it matter what type of bird it is? And you can get rotisserie chickens for $5 at the Costco. <laughs> so, <laughs> whichever way it goes, about easier. I do want to get one of the Costco pumpkin pies. Those things are freaking huge. I want to get one of those. Who doesn't like a slice of pie? All right, so, uh, but uh, the other thing about it, it's November 18th, November 17th, just yesterday. It's been a year since I lost my little brother to an overdose. Uh, my little brother, um, just to recap, he, uh, he, uh, he got injured at work, and they put him on, like, Oxycontin and stuff, and it was just downhill from there. Um there's this uh, TV show out on Hulu called Dope Sick with Michael Keaton, and I think it pretty much kind of illustrates what happened to hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, they say even now fentanyl is the big one, and that's what killed my little brother was fentanyl. And that has now killed uh, so many hundreds of thousands of people now, just within the past year. Uh, it's been tough. It hasn't been easy on my family. We've definitely had a lot of lessons from all this and the suffering uh, as buddha tells us is temporary um, however uh, that those memories are not going to just disappear and that love isn't just going to suddenly flip off in into the into the night it's uh it's incredibly difficult to deal with because you'll be doing fine and then something will remind you of them and uh I myself, I got a little 3D printed picture of him, and I got it um, in my little home recording studio, which is in a closet, (laughs) and um, I used to have him out on the mantle for a while. Uh, I grew out a beard, and I shaved the beard off. I'm trying to get back to a sense of normalcy. I'm going through my classes, trying to get certified. I'm trying to build app games. I've been working on trying to get... uh, even a steady job in that field, and life life keeps going. Life is still moving on. It's just uh, it's never easy to deal with, because no matter how strong you are, something could just trigger. And you know, it could be a song, it could be a photo, it could be a smell. For God's sakes, could be just about anything. And so, as I'm going through this life, learning this lesson. And dealing with this suffering, I'm trying to, uh, everyone of course tries to, to make sense of things. And we live in a wor- world where we uh, we don't really know everything, and we're still all learning ourselves as a, as a people. And uh, when I tell people I'm a, a reverend in the Church of the Latter-day Dude, they mostly just kind of laugh and giggle, you know, it's a bit of a joke. 
Uh, but then, it, then they'll be asked, "What is it? Like, what is it you're you're actually thing?" And I'm like, "Well, it's it's a modern day Taoism. It's it's go with the flow, or as the dude says, take it easy." And so that's what I've been trying to do: just take it easy, go with the flow, stick to the goals, stick to the plan, keep moving forward. And yeah, sometimes it's easier said than done because sometimes you don't feel like doing anything. But, so a lot of times, you know, most would say that uh, they, they know how to take it easy. Hey man, I go out with my friends, you know, chill out, have beer, watch TV. I, I know how to take it easy. Well, I mean, maybe you can take take it easy in a certain moment, but have, have you been able to do that all day? What about when you were cursing at other cars while driving to work, or the customer that badmouthed you, <clears throat> or your your kids? You know, when they're not <laughs> when you're yelling at kids about messy rooms and stuff, you're not taking it easy then. You know, you, you're trying to keep a a calm state of mind. And as the great Bruce Lee would say, one of the best lessons you can learn in life is to master how to remain calm. Calm is a superpower. And that guy used to beat people up for a living. So, you know, that, that, that says something. That says something there, my friend. Uh, so I think I was going to talk a little bit more about dudism and those uh, principles. Now, there is a book out called The Abide Guide, Living Like a Lebowski. And this uh, pretty much goes through everything. It's by Oliver Benjamin and Dwayne Utsi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But they're the founders of the Church of the Latter-day Dude. Uh, they're the ones who run the website. And so in here, they've got... The seven spiritual laws of taking it easy. So I was gonna go through this with you today and see what they have to say. Like what is it you know, I, I know that there's uh they talk about the seven spiritual laws of success, uh, by Chopra and uh Um so they, we've done uh, the seven laws here for Judaism here. So the number one is the law of not doing anything. And it says, In Doing Nothing, A History of Loafers, Loungers, Slackers, and Bums in America, Tom Lotz wrote extensively and painstakingly about not doing anything. The book is almost 400 pages long, and they, they say it's a good one. But uh, the fear of doing nothing could be seen as a close cousin to the fear of death. But don't be worried about that stuff. Life literally just goes on, man. Rest assured that eventually you'll have to get up off the couch, or else you really will be dead. And once you realize this, you can stop worrying and relax completely. Then you'll discover that truly doing nothing is one of life's great pleasures. So what they're kind of saying is obviously don't be sitting on a couch for the rest of your life. You do actually have to kind of get up and go and keep things rolling. I mean, you got to pay the rent, got to keep the lights on. But notice he says here, stop worrying. I know a lot of people are scared of death and, and death is sad. It's a departure. Um, but if if you believe in an afterlife, then... I mean, death is just one step, one, you know, one sad step to total happiness. You have to consider and think about that for a moment, because it's like, you know, yeah, you're not on Earth anymore, and people on Earth are going to be sad, but you're going to be chewing off in into the great beyond, man, doing all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, back. Uh, so, uh, number two, the law of making it to practice. They say practice makes perfect. But there are some of us who will have years of math classes or piano lessons, and we still don't know how to do any of those things. <laughs> <clears throat> the thing is, is that if you do something you love, then practice is just another word for play. And the more you play something, the more you dig in the style. In that case, the pleasure comes not from making it to the finals, but from realizing that it's just a game, man, and that you're lucky to get a lane in the first place. Don't think about whether you're going to enter the next round or not. This is not your homework. It's it's your league game. 
this is life. Yeah. <clears throat> so, a lot of people, this uh, this goes back to like, what you should do with your life is you should pursue your passion. Well, what's your passion? Well, your passion is something that you can do for hours and time will just fly by. Like, you'll, I think George Lucas said, you'll, you find your passion when you're working on something at 7 a.m. And then you get hungry and go down to the kitchen to get something to eat and you realize it's 7 p.m. That's when you find your passion, when you can do something just forever. And, and, and it's, it's, it brings more life to you than, you know, working at the job for the paycheck and dealing with... So, you know, living some other asshole's dream uh, and and that guy's not even there you know cooking the food or dealing with the customers like you are they're they're living you know sleeping it off somewhere else in their bungalow now here's the fourth uh the third law here is the law of being there man and so it says there are so many strands in our heads these days it's a complicated case this life we're always trying to make it better to figure it all out, but it's never going to get better because we'll always be looking to take the next hill. And we'll never figure it out because when you figure out one thing out, another complicated case pops up. So sometimes you've got to just say fuck it and just go bowling or just sit back and watch the cycle. When the dude tells his landlord, I'll be there, man, he means it. He really will take in the whole cycle, every bizarre gesture, no matter how ludicrous the story may seem to be. He'll try to dig the style, even if he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And so, uh, this here is basically how a lot of people say enjoy the moment, you know, live in the here and now. Because some people, it's like, hey, I got this great job, I'm getting great pay, but oh man, I want to get more pay, I want to get more money, I want to get this better job. Be happy with what you got, man. You have to remember that, hey, it, it, you know, the point of, you know, going forward and, you know, being successful, hey, that, that's all on good, man. But uh, be happy with what you got now. Because if you keep going that route, eventually you're just not going to be happy with anything. The fourth is the law of laziness. Um, and it talks about, the, you know, goes back into ta Taoism. Uh, the principle that by doing what comes easy to you, you'll get things done without wasting excess energy or trying too hard known as the 80-20 uh, principle. The 80-20 principle says that 20% of your actions lead to 80% of your results. So what you do is figure out which is which, then only do the 20% and blow off the other 80. That way you can bump yourself into a higher lax bracket. <laughs> yeah, once again, this is about putting things in, following your passion, and going with that flow. Just remember to relax. Take it easy. It's You're going to get there. Uh, number five says the law of those. <laughs> the law of those are the fucking rules. So in the 20th century, nihilists came up with the idea that there were no rules to give a shit about. It sounded like a good idea, but they didn't do very well at it. People need rules, man. Without rules, this sentence could not exist. Nothing could exist. Everything would be a face down in the muck, if not muck itself. And that's why Walter, a devout Jew prefers Nazis over nihilists. At least it's an ethos, he says. Though Nazis did some horrible shit, if nihilists were in charge, things would likely become far worse. The reason that it's popular these days to disregard rules, or break them, is because a lot of the time the rules we have to follow are bad ones thought up by real reactionaries, only looking out for the one who will benefit, which is usually themselves. So that's why it's important to know when to break the rules. Here's a simple answer to tattoo on your forehead. Break the rules when it doesn't hurt anybody else. And uh, this here goes back into um, a few things that I've heard. Uh, you know, because a lot of folks talk about things like cancel culture and stuff. And it's like, look, look, man, times change. Things evolve. People change, okay? A lot of people don't like the rules. A lot of people don't like the speed limit, but it's there for a reason, you know? I think it was like Cat Williams, the comedian, he said, he's like, if you went and asked everyone who tried out for the NBA, hey, if we put that hoop down a foot lower, could you have made it? Oh, yeah, of course I could have made it, but that's, the hoop's not there. It's up there. It's up there for a reason, you know? No one likes the out of bounds, but it's there for a reason. If not, you're going to be shooting from the stands, you know? We have these rules. And so to sit here and just think, oh, well, I can break them all. It's like, no, nah, man, because some people, they break these rules and they hurt other people. And that's the thing. Don't hurt anybody. 
It's one of the biggest things out there. I mean, it's known as the golden rule, which is do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But I say do better unto others. Treat them better than you treat yourself. Because some people don't treat themselves well. So try to do yourself to be better, man. Uh, the sixth law here says the law of fucking listening occasionally. The problem with some lazy people is that they can be so often lost in daydream sequences that they miss out on real life. Daydreams are of vital importance to the dudist mindset and lifestyle, but they can also fuck up the most simple plan if they prevent us from paying attention. The trick is to know when to fucking listen occasionally and learn something and when to say fuck it or I'm sorry I wasn't listening. There's so much to listen to these days that it's important to take the time to go in, tune out, and kick back. Otherwise, all the strands in the old duder's hair will get tangled up and make him or her very undoed. But not listening at all will turn you into a goddamn moron or a fucking dunce. And I have to say I agree with that. You, you have to listen. A lot of folks, you know, when you listen, you learn. When you speak, you just repeat what you already know. So listen. Listen to people. Listen uh, 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 you know, to educators. Uh, l listen to everybody. And then you can formulate your own decision. A lot of people say, I'm only going to listen to one religion. Well, then you, you, you're not listening to everything else out there and you're not realizing that a lot of the other things out there influenced your religion. If I told you that there's like, you know, this entity, uh, all right, I gave this example the other day about learning, it's important to learn about other religions. And I said, the reason for that is because you'll find similarities. You'll also find that the story of whatever prophet or savior you're following has been told before. Everyone takes these legends and it's it's just been put onto the next person. The next prophet. Prophet Muhammad has a similar one. And you'll find this in a lot of them, man. So that's why you really got to open yourself up and listen. And when you listen to other people of other faiths, you, you, you learn a lot of stuff, man. And I've learned a lot. I've learned to open my mind up to things. And to understand other people out there. Because it's like, just because, you know, we're different doesn't mean that we're trying to kill each other. Alright, so, the seventh and final law is... Um, the law of achieving the modest task, which is your charge. Eh, fuck it, six laws isn't enough. So, okay, that's it. <laughs> it's more like six, but, you know. So this puts us into, to like, I hope that gives you a little more uh, mind in there on onto dudism. It's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of dudes out there from a lot of different walks of life, a lot of different faiths, a lot of different countries. And dudes are male or female. And, um they all typically lead us or, or teach us something. They hold to a certain uh, truth or value or, or maybe a certain aspect of life that encourages us to be better, to do, to do more. <clears throat> and I think it's uh, pretty cool, man. Just uh, in my opinion, I think it's a, a pretty neat thing that we have the ability to learn so much now uh, uh, the world's wide open. And so, <clears throat> as you, uh, get all out there in life, man, try to take it easy. Try to be cool and calm and collected and, and, and not go, you know, crazy on anybody or anything. Um, I remember there was this one quote, I think, from the Philippians. I think it was in the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible. Um, and I always like going, because my name's Philip, so I always try to find things that are associated with Philip. Like, for instance, some people don't know that there is a Saint Philip, um, who was one of the Jesus' um, disciples. Uh, he wrote a gospel, and it was excluded, along with the gospel of Saint Thomas and Mary Magdalene and Judas. Yeah, they all wrote gospels. You didn't know that? Yeah. All excluded by the Catholic Church. Uh, so anyway, you got to check those out. I'll talk about those probably another episode. But this quote from Philippians, it comes from 4.6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And this goes into that whole deal of like, um, you know, give it to God. Tell your worries and troubles and God will in some way or somehow formulate some plan and, and that will uh, help guide you in life. So, yeah, yeah, goes along uh, those same old uh, same same lines there, but notice it says don't 
worry about anything. Excuse me. And I think it was, I think it was Tom Petty who said, a lot of the things I worried about never happened anyway. So let's not trouble us. My wife do, does this. I'm sure you probably have someone in your life that worries a lot about this. What if this happens? What if that happens? You know, like a little girl with your toe in the water, you know. I don't want to get in the, the pool, man. You know, what if there's a shark? There's no shark, okay? You just got to start, get in there and swim and go with the flow. So many great dudes have told us to be peaceful, to be calm, to be kind. So let's give it a shot and who knows? Maybe we'll start making better decisions. All right, so now comes the time. It's my little two cents for the day. Now I'm going to do five minutes of silence. Um, this is a time when you can use it to meditate, pray, reflect, uh, and, and, and think about how maybe you can try to take it easy in your own life, be a little bit more calm in your own life. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start that five minutes right now.
Okay. <clears throat> Five minutes, man. <sighs> yeah, it's nice sometimes just to take a breath from the day, you know what I mean? I don't know you, but I just sat back and had a smoke. So, I hope you can take the day's word today and take along with you out there. I know uh, I've got work I've got to do and things we're all we're all doing. I can only hope and wish you that the best of times, man. And so I hope that every day that you can find a way to take it easy. Because when you take it easy, the dude abides. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I can get another one of these. <laughs> so far I'm at one a month. <laughs> Woo! All right, man, y'all have a good one.